Welcome to our podcast, London Visited, all about the fantastic city that is London. My name's Steve, and each week I'll bring to you the facts, history and information about different parts of this great capital. If you have been to London, or are planning on visiting, or just love London from afar, then this is the podcast for you. This podcast also links with our London Visited YouTube channel. So please go over there, take a look, share and subscribe for videos we upload each and every week. I'll put a link in the podcast notes below. This week, where do we go? We go in depth at London Bridge. Several bridges named London Bridge have spanned the River Thames between the City of London and Southwark in central London. The current crossing, which opened to traffic in 1973, is built from concrete and steel. This bridge actually replaced a 19th century stone arched bridge, which in turn superseded a 600-year-old stone medieval structure. This was preceded by a succession of timber bridges, the first of which was built by the Roman founders of London. The bridge currently stands at the western end of the Pool of London and is positioned 30 metres 98 feet upstream from the previous placements of the bridge. The approaches to the medieval bridge were marked by the church of St Magnus the Martyr on the northern bank and by Southwark Cathedral on the southern shore. If you go there now, on the southern shore, there's a plaque marking the spot where it stood. Until Putney Bridge opened in 1729, London Bridge was the only road crossing of the Thames downstream of Kingston-upon-Thames. London Bridge has been depicted in its several forms in art, literature and songs, including in the nursery rhyme, London Bridge is falling down. The origin of the rhyme has many different possibilities, some of them quite gruesome. One of these theories is that it's believed to date back to the supposed destruction of the bridge by Olaf II of Norway in 1014. The feet of the modern London Bridge rest several metres above natural embankments of gravel, sand and clay. From the late Neolithic era, the southern embankment formed a natural causeway above the surrounding swamp and marsh of the river's estuary. The northern ascended to higher ground at the present site of Cornhill, between the embankments, the River Thames could have been crossed by Ford when the tide was low, or Ferry when it was high. Both embankments, particularly the northern, would have offered stable beachheads for boat traffic up and downstream. The Thames and its estuary were a major inland and continental trade route, from at least the 9th century BC. There is archaeological evidence for scattered Neolithic, Bronze Age and Iron Age settlement nearby, but until a bridge was built there, London did not exist. A few miles upstream, beyond the river's upper tidal reach, two ancient fords were in use. These were apparently aligned with the course of Watling Street, which led to the heartlands of Catcher Van Nuni, Britain's most powerful tribe at the time of Caesar's invasion of 54 BC. Sometime before Claudius's conquest of AD 43, power shifted to the Trinovantes, who held the region northeast of the Thames estuary from a capital at Cullumdunium. Nowadays, known as Colchester in Essex. Claudius imposed a major colonia here and made it the capital city of the new Roman province of Britannia. The first London Bridge was built by the Romans as part of their road building program to help consolidate their conquest. The first bridge was probably a Roman military pontoon bridge, giving a rapid overland shortcut to what's known now as Colchester from the southern and Kentish ports along the Roman roads of Stane Street and Watling Street, now known as the A2. Around AD 55, the temporary bridge over the Thames was replaced by a permanent timber-piled bridge, maintained and guarded by a small garrison. On the relatively high, dry ground at the northern end of the bridge, a small, opportunistic trading and shipping settlement took root and grew into the town of Londinium. A smaller settlement developed at the southern end of the bridge, in the area now known as Southwark. The bridge was probably destroyed along with the town in the Bodician Revolt, AD 60, but both were rebuilt and Londinium became the administrative and mercantile capital of Roman Britain. The upstream fords and ferries remained in use, but the bridge offered uninterrupted mass movement of foot, horse and wheel traffic across the Thames, linking four major arterial road systems north of the Thames with four to the south. Just downstream of the bridge were substantial quays and depots, convenient to seagoing trade between Britain and the rest of the Roman Empire. With the end of the Roman rule in Britain in the early 5th century, Londinium was gradually abandoned and the bridge fell into disrepair. In the Anglo-Saxon period, 
the river became a boundary between the emergent, mutually hostile kingdoms of Mercia and Wessex. By the late 9th century, Danish invasions prompted at least a partial reoccupation of the site by the Saxons. The bridge may have been rebuilt by Alfred the Great soon after the Battle of Eddington, as part of Alfred's redevelopment of the area in his system of burrs. Or it may have been rebuilt around 990, under the Saxon king, Elthred the Unready, to hasten his troop movements against Sven Forkbeard, father of Canute the Great. A skaldic tradition describes the bridge's destruction in 1048 by Ethred's ally, Olaf, to divide the Danish forces who held both the ward city of London and Southwark. The earliest contemporary written reference to a Saxon bridge is circa 1016, when chroniclers mention how Canute's ships bypassed the crossing during his war to regain the throne from Edmund Ironside. Following the Norman conquest in 1066, King William I rebuilt the bridge. The London tornado of 1091 destroyed it, also damaging St Mary Le Beau. It was repaired or replaced by King William II, destroyed by a fire in 1136 and rebuilt in the reign of Stephen. Henry II created a monastic guild, the Brethren of the Bridge, to oversee all work on London Bridge. In 1163, Peter of Colchurch, chaplain and warden of the bridge and its brethren, supervised the bridge's last rebuilding in timber. After the murder of his erstwhile friend and later opponent, Thomas Becket, Archbishop of Canterbury, the penitent king, Henry II, commissioned a new stone bridge in place of the old, with a chapel at its centre dedicated to Becket as martyr. The archbishop had been a native Londoner and a popular figure. The chapel of St Thomas on the bridge became the official start of the pilgrimage to his Canterbury shrine. It was grander than some town parish churches and had an additional river level entrance for its fishermen and ferrymen. Building work began in 1176, supervised by Peter of Colchurch. Costs would have been enormous. Henry's attempt to meet them with taxes on wool and sheepskins probably gave rise to later legend that London Bridge was built on wool packs. After Colchurch's death, Isambert, a French monk who was renowned as a bridge builder, was appointed by King John to complete the project. Construction was not finished until 1209, during the reign of King John. John tried to recoup the cost of building and maintaining by licensing out building plots on the bridge, but this was never enough. In 1284, in exchange for loans to Edward I, the City of London acquired the charter for the maintenance of the bridge, based on the duties and toll rights of the former Brethren of the Bridge. The bridge was 26 feet, 8 metres wide, according to some records that were later disputed. The structure was about 800 to 900 feet, 240 to 270 metres long, supported by 19 irregularly shaped arches, founded on starlings set into the riverbed. It had a drawbridge to allow for the passage of tall ships and defensive gatehouses at both ends. By 1358, it was already crowded with 138 shops. At least one two-entrance multi-seated public latrine overhung the bridge parapets and discharged into the river below. So did an unknown number of private latrines, reserved for bridge householders or shopkeepers, and bridge officials. In 1382-83, a new latrine was made, or an old one replaced, at considerable cost, at the northern end of the bridge. The buildings on London Bridge were a major fire hazard and increased the load on its arches several of which had to be rebuilt over the centuries. In 1212, perhaps the greatest of the early fires of London broke out at both ends of the bridge simultaneously, trapping many people in the middle. Houses on the bridge were burnt during Watt Taylor's Peasants' Revolt in 1381 and during Jack Cade's Rebellion in 1450. A major fire of 1633 that destroyed the northern third of the bridge formed a firebreak that prevented further damage to the bridge during the Great Fire of London in 1666. By the Tudor period, there were some 200 buildings on the bridge. Some stood up to seven storeys high, some overhung the river by seven feet, and some overhung the road to form a dark tunnel through which all traffic had to pass. This did not prevent the addition, in 1577, of the palatial Nunsearch House to the buildings that crowded the bridge. The available roadway was just 12 feet 4 metres wide, divided into two lanes, so that in each direction, carts, wagons, coaches and pedestrians shared a single file lane 6 feet wide. When the bridge was congested, crossing it could take up to an hour. 
Those who could afford the fare might prefer to cross by ferry, but the bridge structure had several undesirable effects on river traffic. The narrow arches and wide pier bases restricted the river's tidal ebb and flow, so that in hard winters the river upstream of the bridge became more susceptible to freezing and impassable by boat. The flow was further obstructed in the 16th century by water wheels, designed by Peter Morris, installed under the two northern arches to drive water pumps, and under the two south arches to power grain mills. The difference in water levels on the two sides of the bridge could be as much as six feet, two meters, producing ferocious rapids between the piers resembling a weir. Only the brave or foolhardy attempted to shoot the bridge, steer a boat between the starlings when in flood, and some were drowned in the attempt. The bridge was for wise men to pass over and for fools to pass under. The Southern Gatehouse became the scene of one of London's most notorious sights, a display of the severed heads of traitors impaled on pikes and dipped in tar and boiled to preserve them against the elements. The head of William Wallace was the first to appear on the gate in 1305, starting a tradition that was to continue for another 355 years. Other famous heads on pikes included those of Jack Cade in 1450, Thomas More in 1535, Bishop John Fisher in the same year, and Thomas Cromwell in 1540. In 1598, a German visitor to London, Paul Hetzner, counted over 30 heads on the bridge. He is quoted as saying, On the south is a bridge of stone 800 feet in length, of wonderful work. It is supported upon 20 piers of stone square, 60 feet high and 30 broad, joined by arches about 20 feet diameter. The whole is covered on each side with houses so disposed as to have the appearance of a continued street, not at all of a bridge. Upon this is built a tower, on whose top the heads of such have been executed for high treason are placed on iron spikes. We counted above 30. Evelyn's diary noted that the practice stopped in 1660, following the restoration of King Charles II. But the heads were reported at the site as late as 1772. In 1666, the Great Fire of London first destroyed the bridge's water wheels, preventing them from pumping water to fight the fire, and then burned one third of the houses on the bridge. A gap in the building left by the previous fire in 1633 prevented the destruction of the rest. In 1722, congestion on the bridge was becoming so serious that the Lord Mayor decreed that all carts, coaches and other carriages coming out of Southwark into this city do keep along the west side of the said bridge, and all carts and coaches going out of the city do keep along the east side of the said bridge. This has been suggested as one possible origin for the practice of traffic in Britain driving on the left. A fire in September 1725 destroyed the houses on the bridge's east side and damaged some on the west side. They were rebuilt. The last houses to be built on the bridge were designed by George Dance the Elder in 1745, but even these elegant buildings had begun to subside within a decade. In 1756, the London Bridge Act gave the city corporation the power to purchase all of the properties on the bridge so that they could be demolished and the bridge improved. While this work was underway, a temporary wooden bridge was constructed to the west of London Bridge. It opened on October 1757, but caught fire and collapsed in the following April. The old bridge was reopened until a new wooden construction could be completed a year later. To help improve the navigation under the bridge, its two centre arches were replaced by a single, wider span, the Great Arch, in 1759. Demolition of the houses was completed in 1752 and the last tenant departed after some 550 years of housing on the bridge. Under supervision of Dance the Elder, the roadway was widened to 46 feet, 14 metres, and a bullistrade was added in a gothic taste, together with 14 stone alcoves for pedestrians to shelter in. However, the creation of the Great Arch had weakened the rest of the structure and constant expensive repairs were required in the following decades. This, combined with congestion both on and under the bridge, often leading to fatal accidents, resulted in public pressure for a modern replacement. Parts of the old bridge are still visible in different places. One of the pedestrian alcoves from the 1762 renovation can be seen in Victoria Park Hackney, and another alcove can be seen at the Guy's campus of King's College London. A section of the Bullistrade from London Bridge is at Gilwell Park in Essex, and a relief of the Hanoverian Royal Arms 
from a gateway over the old London Bridge now forms part of the facade of the King's Arms pub in Southwark. New London Bridge, 1831 to 1967. In 1799, a competition was opened to design a replacement for the medieval bridge. A conventional design of five stone arches by John Rennie was chosen. It was built 100 feet, 30 meters west upstream of the original site. Work began in 1824 and the foundation stone was laid in the Southern Coffer Dam on the 15th of June, 1825. The old bridge continued in use while the new bridge was being built and was demolished after the latter opened in 1831. New approach roads had to be built, which cost three times as much as the bridge itself. The total costs around £2.5 million, worth £250 million in 2019, were shared by the British government and the Corporation of London. The new bridge was 920 feet, 283 metres long and 49 feet, 15 metres wide, constructed from Hator granite. The official opening took place on the 1st of August 1831. King William IV and Queen Adelaide attended a banquet in a pavilion erected on the bridge. In 1796, the bridge was the busiest point in London and one of its most congested. 8,000 pedestrians and 900 vehicles crossing every hour. It was widened by 13 feet, 4 metres, using granite corbels. Subsequent surveys showed that the bridge was sinking an inch, about 2.5 centimetres, every eight years. And by 1924, the east side had sunk some 3 to 4 inches, about 9 centimetres, lower than the west side. The bridge would have to be removed and replaced. In 1967, the Common Council of the City of London placed the bridge on the market and began to look for potential buyers. Council member Ivan Lucken put forward the idea of selling the bridge and recalled, They all thought I was completely crazy when I suggested we should sell London Bridge when it needed replacing. On the 18th of April 1968, the bridge was purchased by the Mississarian entrepreneur Robert P. McCulloch of McCulloch Oil. For $2,460,000 US dollars. The claim that McCulloch believed mistakenly that he was buying the more impressive tower bridge was denied by Luckin in a newspaper interview. As the bridge was taken apart, each piece was meticulously numbered. The blocks were then shipped via the Panama Canal to California and trucked from Long Beach to Arizona. The bridge was constructed at Lake Havasu City, Arizona and rededicated on the 10th of October 1971. The reconstruction of Rene's London Bridge spans the Bridgewater Channel Canal that leads from the uptown area of Lake Havasu City and follows McCulloch Boulevard onto an island that has yet to be named. The London Bridge that was rebuilt at Lake Havasu City consists of a frame with stones from Rene's London Bridge as a cladding. The cladding stones are 150 to 200 millimetres, 6 to 8 inches thick. Some of the stones from the bridge were left behind at the Merivale Quarry at Princetown in Devon. When Merivale Quarry was abandoned and flooded in 2003, some of the remaining stones were sold in an online auction. The Modern London Bridge The current London Bridge was designed by architect Lord Horford and was constructed from 1967 to 1972 and opened by Queen Elizabeth II on the 7th of March 1973. It comprises three spans of pre-stressed concrete box girders, a total of 928 feet, 283 metres long. The cost of £4 million, 55.5 million in 2019, was met entirely by the Bridge House Estates charity. The current bridge was built in the same location as Rennie's Bridge, with the previous bridge remaining in use while the first two girders were constructed upstream and downstream. Traffic was then transferred onto the two new girders, and the previous bridge demolished to allow the final two central girders to be added. In 1984, the British warship HMS Jupiter collided with London Bridge, causing significant damage to both the ship and the bridge. The current London Bridge is often shown in films, news and documentaries, showing the throng of commuters journeying to work into the city from London Bridge Station, south to the north. An example of this is actor Hugh Grant crossing the bridge north to south during the morning rush hour in the 2002 film About a Boy. On the 11th of July 2009, as part of the annual Lord Mayor's Charity Appeal and to mark the 800th anniversary of Old London Bridge's completion in the reign of King John, the Lord Mayor and Freeman of the city drove a flock of sheep across the bridge, supposedly by an ancient rite. 
I hope you've enjoyed our in-depth look at London Bridge and learned something really interesting and new in this. Please do share with your friends and subscribe to our podcast. Please also go onto YouTube and see our channel London Visited to see all the sights of London on there. We'll see you soon on this podcast for another look at a part of London. Thanks for listening. Take care. Bye.